Introducing CFAPA, the new advanced 3x3 method that you need to know to improve your times. Disclaimer, this method is based off of CFOP, so if you don't know CFOP, I recommend learning that right now. Have you ever found yourself in a pickle where you have a super unlucky cross and absolutely no idea what you're doing? Well, I have the solution for you, where you never ever have to solve the cross correctly again. So let's get into it, shall we? Now, just to know, I will be moving through this tutorial pretty quickly as most of you should at least know a basis of CFOP and most of the algorithms that CFOP contains. Now, if you don't know all of these algorithms, it is okay that you still do two-step OLL and two-step PLL, but I'm not going to be moving as slowly as I would with a beginner. So without any further ado, let's just get right into this tutorial. First, I will explain what the acronym CFOPA or CFOPI stands for. So similar to CFOP, starting off we have C and C means cross. But in this method, it doesn't matter how you solve the cross, it does not need to be correct. Next up, we have F, which stands for F2L, and this means the first two layers. Then we have O, which stands for OLL, or orienting the last layer, and this is completed by solving the side opposite of the side that you started with. So in most cases, it will be yellow. Next up, there's P, which stands for PLL, or permutating the last layer, and this is completed by solving the last layer. And finally, unlike CFOP, we have another P, which stands for PFL, or permutating the first layer. And basically, in this step, we are just fixing the cross that we did wrong in the very beginning, with one simple algorithm. Now, sometimes in the PLL or PFL stage, you will see something that you can't solve with a normal algorithm. And this is sort of a parity. Now, if you can't solve it on the top, then you also can't solve it on the bottom. So this parity algorithm goes as shown. M2, U2, M2. And you can also add any AUF you need to. And now you can see they're just normal algorithms to solve these layers. So with the basic knowledge of this method out of the way, I will now move on to how this method actually works. So we will start off with the cross step. And as shown in the intro, it does not matter which way you solve the cross. So we are going to use this as our advantage and solve it in the quickest way possible. So notice this can go down, this can go down, over, down. And that was the fewest moves I could find. And it is solved incorrectly, but that is okay. So now, ignoring the messed up cross, we'll do F2L like normal. So here's a pair already. I'm gonna go insert that. See, here's a second pair. And here is a third pair. And here's the last pair. So just like as followed, F2L is just the same as CFOP. So then we move on to OLL, which is also the exact same as you would do in CFOP. So I see this algorithm right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and solve that. Now again, I'm just going to clarify that it does not matter how many steps you use in OLL, whether it's two, three, whatever you use, it will not affect the outcome. So as an example, let's just say you use two-step OLL. So first you do one algorithm, and then you get the other algorithm. And as you can see, however many steps you use, it will not affect the outcome. So now with OLL out of the way, we can move on to PLL. So right away, as you can see, we do not have a recognizable PLL case. And this means that we have parity. So if you check the bottom, you can also tell that there's parity down here. So we are going to hold the key wherever and do the parity algorithm. M2, U2, M2, and then whatever AUF we need. And now as you can see, we have a recognizable PLL case and this is an A perm, so I'm going to go ahead and do the algorithm, and PLL is complete. So now we are on the final step of CFOPA, or CFOPI, and this is not a step that just normal CFOP contains. And this step is PFL, or permutating the first layer. So remember in the beginning when we didn't solve the cross correctly? Well that's okay, because now, in PFL, we will use a, just a normal PLL algorithm to solve this case. So as you can see, this is a U perm. So I'm going to go ahead and solve that, and the cube is complete. Now I just wanted to note that when solving the PFL stage, you will only ever get EP algs, or otherwise known as 
edge permutation algorithms. So this is because whenever solving the cross, you are only messing with edges. So just note that you will never ever get any corner permutation PL algorithms, which is something like this, where you have to solve the corners. Because whenever solving a cross, you only use edges, you will only get algorithms like this, where you will only ever have to permutate the edges. Now, sometimes when you solve the cross, you will not solve it into a case that will give you parity. So as you can see, this will eventually end up as a z-perm. So now you know that whenever you have PLL and PFL, you will not have any parity. That is an example of look ahead. And what do you know? We are right. So as you can see, I have solved F2L and OLL. And for PLL, I have an A-perm, which is not parity. And for PFL, I have a Z-perm, which is also not parity. And sometimes you will solve the cross correctly, so in this case, you will not have any PFL algorithms. And so if you have a case like this, where all of the cross edges are on their opposite colors, and you keep it like that, at the end, for PFL, you will have an H-perm. Now, would you rather have an H-perm algorithm at the very end, or just do a double turn and have no PFL algorithm? which saves you a lot of time. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering, how is the method CFAPA, or CFAPI, faster than the original method CFAP? And how does it give me an advantage over it? Well, let me tell you right now. So remember in the skit in the beginning, when I asked if anybody had ever had a cross case that just completely stumped them and left them with no solutions? Well, by using the CFAPA method, you can save a lot of your time and effort by doing the fewest moves possible. Now this will give you something extra to do at the very end of the solve, but it will give you better look ahead and you'll know what you have to do instead of being stumped. Anyways guys, that's gonna have to be all for this video. With that said, if you liked the video and found it helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to support this channel, as well as turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on any cool new videos on this channel in the future. Also, share this video with everyone you know and comment down below what you thought, if you liked the video, and or any cool new video ideas for the future. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye!